Hi everyone, my name is Corey Jewett. I'm the Director of Athletic Communications and we are here today with Dr. Elizabeth Kuhn, 2014 graduate of Gettysburg College. From here on out, we will just call her Lizzie because that's how we knew her at Gettysburg College. Lizzie, thank you for joining us today. We're gonna to have a great conversation and we're gonna throw it back to when you were on campus. We're gonna talk about a match against Susquehanna from 2012 as well as getting into some other details about how you ended up in the medical profession, as well as what you're seeing out there in regard to the pandemic that's going on too. So Lizzie, I just wanna say, welcome. How are you doing? So thank you so much for having me. It is great to see you and also to kind of relive these fun memories from my time at Gettysburg. I am doing well, just plugging along during my residency at CHOP. Um, and otherwise, no real complaints. Well, that is always a good way to start the conversation. And of course, Lizzie, I, I just got to lay it out there. I told you I had your stats written down. So I just want to give a people of an idea of who we're dealing with here. Of course, your hometown is Wilmington, Delaware. You went to Archmere Academy and you were Centennial Conference Scholar Athlete of the Year in 2013. So it makes sense that you ended up going to medical school, medical school with that kind of credentials behind your health sciences major. You were a setter on the team, finishing sixth in school history in assists with almost 2,800 and 15th in career aces too. I remember you going to the back line, serving them up left-handed and knocking them down. Uh, that 15th doesn't seem like it's very high, but in rally scoring, it's actually the third most since rally scoring, so that is very significant. Pre-2001, volleyball was a whole different ball game. So we're gonna talk about some stats you put up in a game, 2012, eight years ago, if, uh, if my math is right. It doesn't seem that long ago to you and I, but it's been eight years since this game. So setting the stage, we're going into this game. We just lost three games in a row. We, we're 0-4 in five set matches and playing Susquehanna, a team that was very good at the time. They were annual contenders in Landmark Conference. Great head coach, Kuipo Tom. He's one of my favorite opposing coaches that we end up playing. I know he's a good friend of Leah's too. And we've always had great battles with the Riverhawks as well. So this match, we go down 0-2 and somehow come back and win it in five sets. What do you remember from the match? And what do you remember about some of the, the big playmakers we had out there on the court that day? Yeah, so I think the one thing that strikes me most about that game is I remember there was a huge Susquehanna crowd there. And at the beginning of the match, we, I think, let that get in our heads a little bit and started off a little slower than we normally do and got behind. The Once we hit the third set, though, and we ended up going – point for point at the end there and squeaking out a very narrow win. I think the tides completely turned and from there on out, the floodgates were kind of open. When you talk about playmakers from that game, I mean, Sydney Bracken could do no wrong. I remember Kate and I just looking at one another and just like set it to Sydney, set it to Sydney. Um, we were running her kind of all over the outside line, pulling her in, um, and running some inside plays as well. And she just was unstoppable in that game. We also had a really great defensive effort starting at the front line with Sarah Gorski, who put up some huge blocks against a very uh, talented outside hitter that they had. And I think that was really crucial once we started um, shutting down their uh, talented outside hitter. I think that opened up the game for us. And then on the back line, our defenders played really well. They were making some great um, serve receive plays and then also digging really, really well. The stats from the defensive end were really remarkable that game as well. Yeah, we had 99 total digs in that game, which is an incredible total when you think about it. And Katie Wilson had 38 digs with the it's, at the time was the third most digs we've ever had in a single match. School record was 43 set by Steph Vile um, about two decades ago, 15 years ago. We'll give her. I don't want to put 
say Steph is <laughs> older than what she is. Um, and then also Katie had five aces too. So she was kind of doing it on both fronts. It was an interesting offense too. We were running a six, two at the time with two setters, which I think was the only year we did that among your four years at Gettysburg too. So it was a little different with the, running it that way with the hitters too. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely different, but is always nice to open up that right-sided hitter. And I think played to our advantage, especially when, um, Sydney was kind of moving across the net. We were able to at least distract from her a little bit, as well as from our middle hitters. And then uh, Courtney obviously had a really good game as well. And I think it helped us round out the offense and keep the opposing team on their toes. Yeah, Courtney Sear, you mentioned she had 11 kills as well. So we had a pretty well-rounded offense. Overall, I've got the stats over here on my other screen, so I'm just checking it out. And Sydney, too, put up 11 digs, so a nice double-double from your outside never hurts the offensive game plan either. And, of course, that was a key moment of the season for us. As I mentioned, we kind of hit a little bit of a skid there in the middle of the season. Uh, this game, I think, was in mid-October, around October 10th, I believe, was the date. And then after that, we won four consecutive matches, and then we ended up qualifying for the Centennial Conference playoffs, too. So talk about how that match really just kind of uplifted us, given us – maybe some extra motivation to close out that season strong. Yeah, I know you mentioned at the beginning that we were 0-4 in five-set matches. That's not something that you forget and honestly does play in the back of your head as you're down to nothing in the middle of this match. And I think being able to not only overcome that, but overcome a really close-fought third game, put it in the back of our minds that – no matter what situation we found ourselves in, we could find a way out if we had to. And to just really see our offense and defense play as well as they did showed us, I think, what our peak was and how good we could, um, how well we could play together and ultimately how we could finish out the season and aim um, for a tournament berth. Of course, great lessons in the middle of the year. And of course, you did a lot of stuff off the court, too, and I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about that. I talked up your stats, but you got it done in the classroom, too. As I mentioned, you were a scholar athlete of the year. That is the highest GPA of anybody on the all-conference team. So, you know, that's 15 to 20 young women. You had the highest GPA of all of them during your senior season in 2013. So how, how were you able, as a volleyball student athlete, to really balance things out with your academics and then it eventually, you know, led you on the path you're on now. And that's, you know, in the medical profession. So I always joke, and I think even as a volleyball team, we've joked that when you're busy, you know how to focus in that off time. And so sometimes during the season is, is when you really hone in on your academics and make sure you're taking every second you have to get your work done. And then I always felt like I had incredible support from um, coach, which was a huge, huge part of being successful in the classroom, knowing that she always had my back. And if I needed to get things done, she always supported me. Yeah, Coach Bernier's always been really good with things of that nature, whether it was academics or even outside activities like community service. And our profile, Shannon Fletcher, one of our recent graduates, and the work she did with uh, the homeless in D.C. recently, too. She took a weekend off away from a tournament to go do that. So that's definitely something Leah takes a lot of pride in is what the student athletes or her volleyball athletes are able to do off the court. She talked a lot about that balance and how proud she is to see that. And that's the big draw for Bullets Volleyball. And of course, you are now, you went to, I believe, Thomas Jefferson University, the Sydney Kimmel Medical College. Did I get all of that right? Yeah, we tagged on recently the, the last part of the name. So it's now quite a long uh, title for the school, but yep. <laughs> and you've been at CHOP for how long now? So I am a little bit into my second year now. So I guess by winter time, it'll be, I'll be halfway through residency. Oh, wow. It just it flies by, but I think we can, it's safe to say this year in particular, things have, have slowed down. I know the, the running memes are that 2020 has not been a fun year for most of us. And of course, you in the medical field have seen 
a lot of stuff out there going on during this pandemic. We had a chance to touch base earlier this spring for another project and just going over some of the things that was go were going on at CHOP and dealing with COVID too. I think at the time you mentioned a mobile pediatric unit that CHOP had recently instituted. So talk about some of the things that you've experienced during this pandemic. And then also, what's, what's your outlook as a medical professional? What's your outlook for it all? And particularly when it comes to Gettysburg College and, and Bullets Volleyball and where you think we can go? Yeah, so I think at the start of the pandemic, being in a pediatric hospital was a very interesting place to be. We were looking at knowing that we were going to start to have more cases, and there had been a little bit of data out there that showed that kids potentially fared better and had better outcomes when they um, contracted the virus. So really it was a time where we were trying to figure out how we could support our adult colleagues as they really worked endless hours in the hospital trying to keep everyone healthy and safe and i think the most remarkable part about the pandemic for me was watching my co-residents and chop as a whole respond and i found it honestly very inspiring i had co-residents who invented a low cost ventilator. That's amazing. That's out of control crazy. Um, I had, when we were, when we thought we were actually going to start taking adult patients from adult hospitals, if they needed it, all of our med peds colleagues. So those that do both adult medicine and pediatric medicine created a series of lectures for us to remind all of us pediatricians, everything we learned about adult medicine in medical school. And then, like you mentioned, I, along with some of my other co-residents, were able to get involved in creating a pediatric testing site that was mobile and out in the community. And since then, we kind of grew from there and have a few different sites. But it was remarkable to watch the, the response from everyone and really the altruism that I saw from my colleagues was, I think both inspiring and what I hope we can hold on to as we move into the next stages of this and as we eventually move past this to really hold on to the idea that we're stronger when we when we fight something together and when we put others before ourselves and so I think you know not only as a medical field as you know a community and um and larger that I hope that's something that we hold on to moving forward. Those are some great, inspiring words, Lizzie. And I don't want to take too much of your time because obviously you're coming off your shift at work too. I'm sure you want to get home and, and rest up for probably your next shift tomorrow, I would assume. So <laughs> I just want to leave one more thing out there for you. Do you have any, any other words, thoughts for the Bullets volleyball team as they march into, you know, an unprecedented year and, you know, without competition this fall, hopefully competition in the spring if things go well. So any parting words you can share with your bullet colleagues? Yeah, honestly, I, I can't even imagine how difficult it's been. Sports were such a huge part of my identity. So I I definitely feel for them as they, you know, move into these uncharted waters and things aren't the way they hoped they would be. But ultimately, I hope as a team, it brings them closer together and that when they do come back to the court, it makes all of those moments that much more sweet. I knew you had the right answer there, Lizzie. You nailed it on the head for sure. So that is really everything that I wanted to ask. I mean, we touched on a great game. Hopefully we have some great games in the future as well that you can follow along with. So for Lizzie Coon, Dr. Lizzie Kuhn. My name is Corey Jewett. I am signing off for this edition of Gettysburg Great Games. Thanks, everybody.